हेलो फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार दिस इज मनोज जोशी आई वेलकम यू टू दिस कोरोना वायरस वेलनेस टॉक दिस इज द टुडे इज द डे 15 वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ कोरोना वायरस पैंडेमिक एंड हाउ द योगा प्राणायाम द कांसेप्ट ऑफ वेदांता कैन हेल्प अस एज यूजुअल वी विल प्रैक्टिस दिस वी विल स्टार्ट दिस प्रोग्राम विद अ गोल सेटिंग so we keep our palms together and we try to set the intention of total health true happiness and unconditional love along with a strong immune system physically mentally and spiritually so let's begin that prayer first bring your palms together i would recommend if you can keep your eyes gently closed for a moment and try to take this moment to bring out that resolve out loud in your mind and say to yourself i am totally healthy i am truly happy and i have a strong immune system that can fight this virus and many more virus in the future and when you repeat this goal three times in your mind before you practice something spiritual and towards the end again repeat them three times this is a yogic technique to reprogram your subconscious mind now we'll raise both hands up to the sky in a surrender mudra by keeping the palms open let your fingertips be the conduit through which we'll download the cosmic energy collectively by chanting five ohms so please join me breathe in with an open mind open heart inhale go in go in go silence after the last humming sound is very important now bring your palms together and let's start with this yogic prayer i'll explain the meaning of that om sahana bhavatu sahana ubhunaktu saha viryam karavavahai tejasvina vaditamastu ma vidvisavahai om shanti 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 he the meaning of this prayer may the universe protect us all may the universe nourish us all may this world well stop be fruitful and enlightening to all of us may there be no discord no disharmony among each other may there be peace oh peace 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 so friends we have been talking about many different aspects of yoga and vedanta so today i will talk about in continuation to what we talked about yesterday we talked about the letting go how the simple concept of letting go can help us not to get unduly attached to the mundane world rather detach from the objective world and attach yourself to the subject that we are so that itself is the biggest truth of the vedanta so once we get it even half way even one quarter of the way we will definitely be very successful in our life see i have already told many times there is only one truth but the masters speak differently if you look at everything it's only one concept that everybody is trying to explain in millions and millions of different ways like think about love so think about how many movies are made on love how many stories are written on love just to explain that concept of love and how many lives have experimented love billions and billions right so one truth but there are many different ways of telling it because we love varieties just like we don't get satisfied with one kind of food all the time 
So we need varieties. But when we become a little bit more aware of the truth itself without getting swayed away by the varieties of it, then we'll be in trouble. So for that, today I'm going to talk about the true knowledge. What is the importance of the true knowledge in our life? Without the true knowledge, we won't be successful. Isn't it? Knowledge is power. Lack of knowledge is lack of power, right? So I'll start with a small story. So the story goes like, in the village, there was an old lady and she was very fond of everybody. So wherever she had a problem, the whole village would come and help her out. So one day so happened that she was frantically looking out on her veranda for something. She was searching here and there all the time. She was uh, having a broomstick and then cleaning up several times. So all the villagers were just watching it, watching her looking something frantically. So all those people came and then asked her, Auntie, what are you looking for? Is there anywhere that we can help? So this person, this old lady said like, now, look, I'm looking for that needle. It's so important for me. I have to see that cloth for me myself and can you please help me to look for that lost needle you know because needle is so small so obviously it takes a lot of time for an old lady to find it so everybody started looking out in the veranda everywhere all around hours went by and they couldn't find the needle and somebody asked her where exactly did you lose the needle can you tell us exact point so that you can micro search there and then probably you can find it and to everybody's surprise, the old lady said, you know, last night I was stitching my torn out cloth in my bedroom, way in the house. And then the needle got lost. Then everybody said, like, if you were sewing your cloth in the bedroom, way inside the hall, inside the house, why are you looking outside? Then the lady said, look, there is no light inside the room, right? There is way out light here. That's why I'm searching for the needle. Right? So this is a very powerful and profound story. You might laugh it away, but look at We already know what is the truth, but don't we search for the truth all around? It's like that Kasturi brig, right? That the special deer in India, they have got a arrow mask on her forehead. And all his life, the deer looks around, moves around frantically here and there. To search for that fragrance, where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? Of course, he will know that the fragrance is coming from her forehead. It's hidden. So likewise, we always try to find out the truth where there is light, where there is what happened. So we always try to find out where there is light, isn't it? So that's a, that's a profound story. So the true knowledge is there, but we are not aware of it, where to search for. And even though you are aware of it, because of certain things that happens in our life, which is I'm going to talk about today, because of that factor, we always try to look for the lost needle way out in the light, even though we lost it inside the house. I'll give you a simple concept of Vedanta today. You know, Vedanta is the treasure house of all the yogic knowledge, Vedantic knowledge. So yoga and Vedanta are sister science. If you look at Vedanta as the science of life, yoga is the technology of life. So it implements on that. So if you look at the whole concept, there is a philosophy called Sankhya philosophy in the Vedantic wisdom. There are different systems. So without going there, I'll just talk about so this system talks about there is always a pair of two things. A pair of two things like there is a male component, there is a female component. Right? That's how we get the electricity. There is a positive current, there is a negative current. There is a sun element, there is a moon element. Right? There is a male and female I talked about, positive and negative I talked about. There are Purusha and Prakriti, there is Shiva and Shakti. Even in the computer world, 
we talk about zero and one. It's a binary form, right? Without that, we can't even compute anything. So likewise, there is a concept called Brahman and Maya. So the Maya is a part of the Prakriti. And Purusha or the Brahman is a part of the universe, which is the truth. The Maya or the Prakriti always goes on changing. Everything that you can think about changing all the time, belonging to the realm of Maya or the illusion of the mind. The mind has created the Maya, but the universe, the nature, the God has created the Brahman. So this Maya and Brahman always go together. For example, if you look at your own being itself, we have a body, we have a mind. So if you ask yourself, what is real? What is not changing? Is the body real? Is the mind real? Because something that is real should not undergo any changes. It should be constant, right? It should be all the time the same thing. That's real thing. Real thing don't go for changes. But something which is flaky, something which is not real, which constantly goes on changing. And if you look at your own body, it's constantly changing. Isn't it? From the day that you're born, you're a tiny, tiny little baby. If I take a picture of that, and then one year old yourself, two year old yourself, five year old, 10 years old, 20 years old. So if I take about 500 pictures of yours in a timeline and project it somewhere or put it on a wall, I think it will be very difficult for you to recognize yourself. And particularly when I mix up all your childhood pictures with millions of other pictures, you'll be having difficulties to find it, right? So that means our body is constantly changing. One day it was one year old, then you say that I'm two year old, one day you said like I'm a toddler, I'm a teenager, now I'm employed, now I'm married, I'm divorced, I'm employed, I don't have a job, I'm healthy, I'm sick, I'm wealthy, I don't have money. So all these things in all these 10 sentences that I made, if you ask what is that common thing which is not changing. So the common denominator of all the sentences that I made is I, that I is the bigger I, not the egoistic I that identifies itself with different objects, including the body and mind. So that bigger I is the self, which is not changing at all. So this is a change and changing and unchanging stuff. They are also together. Without having an unchanging surface, you cannot notice the change. I'll give you a simple example. In, in front of me, there is a big clock on the wall. And I can see that clock. There are number handles, there are minute handles, there are hour handles. There are different numbers written. But behind all these number handles and all these things, there is a white dial. That dial is steady. Only the hour handles, the minute handles are moving. So if the dial also is moving, then probably I won't be able to notice the time. Because if both are changing, both are moving, then I won't have a reference of that. If the number dial is moving and also our handles are moving, I won't know what is the time. So in order to get a proper time or the actual utility of the clock, one has to be steady, the other has to move. So the movement of the needles are more concrete with respect to that unchanging dial. Likewise, behind everything that is changing in this life, there must be something unchanging which is registering all these changes, which is witnessing all these changes. And that unchanging self is the Brahman, that unchanging self is the Atman, that unchanging self is the Purusha, that unchanging self is that I. So that I doesn't change, the body as a part of Prakriti always changes. The mind also belongs to the Prakriti, made up of five elements, the earth, water, fire, air and space, the Pancha Mahabhut and the different Tanmatras. So these subtle objects, the subtle elements, they constitute our body because it is made up of these material objects, the elemental objects, Pancha Mahabhut, the body is constantly changing. So when we understand this very concept that my self or the self is different from the body, the self is different from the mind, 
it's a great profound knowledge that the indian yoga system gives to the world so once you learn this concept then you will be able to deal with your body in a different way you'll be able to deal with your mind in a different way just like if you have a car and you identify that you are not your car you have a house you identify that you are not your house you have a spouse you identify that you are not your spouse you have children you identify that you have not your, you are not your children they are separate from you so the moment you identify yourself separate from your spouse from your children from your house from your car if something goes wrong with those objects those subjects those people or those things in your life or beings in your life you can do something about it isn't it if the car is broken i can go to the insurance company and claim for it or i can get it fixed if my house is broken i can get a handyman and get it fixed if something happens to my children i can go to the doctor and then talk about that or if something happens i can do something about it isn't it because i'm separate from that so likewise if you think about it a little bit more deeper your body is separate than you your mind is separate than you you are the brahman and the body is the maya so if you go a little bit more deeper then we just talk about what are the different attributes of the brahman and maya so the maya has got two attributes namely one is a name and one is a form so anything and everything that you see in the entire universe which has a name and a form that you can relate to something that looks so, somehow or there is a name to it like universe like earth like a tree like a house like a human being like a corona virus so everything that has a name and a form is not permanent it's transitory in nature it will go away it will perish in due course of time including our own body our body doesn't remain forever after 80 90 years after 100 years this body will die but the self will never die think about it so the 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 maya has got these two things names and forms anything which is a form and a name you can categorically put them into one basket that's called maya which is temporary who doesn't have the reality who is a not real which is always constantly changing and those are maya thing elusive things they are all the delusions of the brain or the mind i talk about that later how the brain hallucinates everything to make a meaning of everything that we see outside through our eyes coming back to the brahman which is the unchanging self that has got three attributes in sanskrit they call it sthiti bhati and priti in other words sat chit and ananda in english pure existence pure consciousness and pure bliss sat chit and ananda that means everything exists from the existence point of view there is no differentiation the mountain has the same existence than a small molecule a virus the ant has the same existence as an elephant the king has the same existence from a pauper so existentially everything is same everything exists that's the property now the second aspect is bhati bhati means that that awareness bhati means that light which illuminates that which tells to the world that i am existing that is the chit aspect of it the consciousness aspect of it i am existing i have got some power to, to express myself i have got some power to illuminate myself so everything that is created by the brahman has got some like existence which is existence also has the power to talk about itself express about just like a flower has a beautiful nature the color the fragrance those are all, all different attributes that expresses itself is truth is nature existence pure consciousness and the bliss everything has got a positive a, a blissful thing that gives you happiness that priti right that ananda that bliss that factor of happiness so anything and everything if you look at has got something relevant to give some pleasure to the world that's why it said not a single grain not a single leaf not a single object that is created in the entire universe is useless at all everything has got its own properties 
everything has got its own existence everything has their own illuminating power they are beautiful they are powerful that they come to the brahman they come from the brahman so brahman has got three characteristics three attributes the maya has got two once you differentiate between these two what is real and what is unreal what is maya and what is brahman what is purusha what is prakriti then you will have no confusion in life in fact if you look at a swan hansa has got this unique ability to differentiate the milk from the water so if you give a pot of milk and water mixed together this swan will drink the milk and leave the water aside isn't it a very unique quality so that's why the hamsa is considered as a title to given to self realized souls enlightened master to get this title of paramahamsa like paramahamsa ramakrishna paramahamsa yogananda saraswati paramahamsa krishna avatar so all these titles are given to the self enlightened people because they have got the power to discriminate what is maya and what is brahman and they they choose brahman you remember i talked about shreyas and prayas in one of the talks what is good and what is pleasant always life will be offering us this opportunity to discern or to discriminate or to understand what is good for us what is real and what is unreal and then if you choose by disciplining your mind the right thing the brahman then automatically your life will be always moving in the right direction it's like a clinometer like a compass always brahman maya brahman maya brahman maya so if you look at the brahman aspect what is real like look at anybody got to look at most of the time the hatred comes because of the name and form maybe that person doesn't look good maybe that person doesn't have all the attributes that you are expecting that's where the anger comes into your life but if you look at the brahman aspect of it the real existence consciousness and the bliss is all there you just have to change your perspective of life you have to step back and look at that unchanging self which is all there all the time which is not changing but if you look at the changing aspect of another person then you will always subject of the maya or the illusion of the mind and that has got stress worry anxiety fear everything and that primarily happens at a body level consciousness we have anna maya kosha the physical body so if you constantly remain and refer to the body level consciousness you will be more subject and more susceptible to the power of maya but if you slowly taking 2 minutes 3 minutes of meditation and then take a holy dip into the brahman which is the pure existence the source of infinite intelligence which is all within you then automatically you'll be coming out from the clutches of the maya or the illusion and slowly slowly move towards the brahman what is the real truth which is the pure happiness pure joy and those happiness are million times powerful than the happiness that we derive from the objective world million times even sometimes say billion times this very subtle very deep in quality so once you have even a fraction of a moment you get an experience of that state of mind which is explained in the concept of samadhi in the deep meditation you will understand how powerful and how beautiful those experiences are so friends we are talking about maya and brahman which is a part of the pure vedantic knowledge which is the true knowledge so once we acquire this true knowledge we we'll have the right attitude with the right mindset with the right knowledge with the right skills right tools right techniques then we'll be unstoppable we'll be all the successful because success doesn't matter what you derive at the journey should be the reward so if you are still striving for your excellence you are never a failure so success is defined by you so if you adhere to the three brahman qualities your existence your satta you exist here you have a name you have an identity you must prove that by dint of your power of mind and intelligence so if you have that ability to express yourself through your mind intellect through the pure consciousness which is flowing through you you can express your intelligence and mental ability in many different ways in a very passionate way but you have to calm down your mind the moment you learn the art of calming down the mind and the mind goes and gets in touch with that permanent source of happiness then automatically 
we'll be given a lot of opportunities in life to move towards the real thing. And that leads us to our success, that leads us to our happiness, that leads us to our health, that leads us to our a stronger immune system, you name it. Everything can be achieved only by going inward. The outer side world is Maya. The in, inner world or the subjective world is the Brahman. Anything and everything that you do in that objective world is all delusion. But with this knowledge, if you try to apply this into your life just by simple meditation for five minutes every day, a couple of times throughout the day, or whenever you get a time, just closing the eyes, connecting with the heart center, thinking about the prana shakti or the brahman shakti or the brahman. So you are the atman, which is a derivative of the brahman, which is an at, which is a part of the brahman. So when you start going deeper inside, that union would happen. That union of atman to brahman is called yoga. So yoga is the technology of connecting you to yourself of going inside your home. That's a beautiful homecoming experience. So let's keep the eyes closed for a moment and try to practice this meditation for a couple of minutes that you have. So keep your palms together maybe, whenever you bring your palms together to Namaskar Mudra, naturally your body becomes more stable. Your left side, right side, which is controlled by the sun and moon energy, the yang and the yin, the purush and prakriti, all those things that we talk about, Shiva and Shakti, those two forms of energy get perfectly balanced and we automatically reach a state of mind which is very conducive for this divine experience. So on top of this, bring your awareness to your heart center and try to become aware of your breath. Let Prana Shakti be the Brahman today. Pranasikti, the one single mantra or the name that has all the attributes. So think about Pranasikti as the mantra for the true Brahman, the true self that you are, the pure consciousness that is present in your heart. And as you breathe in, think about five times or repeat that mantra of Pranasikti five times in your mind. And as you breathe out, repeat again five times. That's a simple technique. That's all you have to do and stay there for one minute. Now bring that awareness to your heart center again. Think like this little meditation that we have done is automatically illuminating every cell in our body and our body is creating a beautiful aura, a beautiful light. You can think about a golden light or a white light, which is a representative of the healing energy. And this will protect us from all dangers. This will protect us from all virus infection. Everything will be miles away because your Brahmanu or the Brahma Shakti is billions and billions and more powerful than the Bhutanu or the virus. So let's reconnect to that powerful source and distribute that to the entire world. We thought about that mantra, Purnavada, Purnamidam mantra, that means this is full, that is full, the full is born out of full. If you take the full out of full, what remains is also full, just like a candle. If you lit one candle from it, the light is same. Even if you lit millions of candles from that single candle, 
the light of that millionth of the candle will be the same as the first candle because that light is complete by all means and if you take the light from that light what remains is also light like your love the true knowledge the brahman all is complete you can't add anything you can't delete anything our life is is complete by all means so we have every reason to be happy healthy and successful that with that mantra and that expansive consciousness of the mind with this simple tool of yoga and vedanta let's look forward for a wonderful time ahead a beautiful weekend is waiting for you and hope everybody observe the rules and regulations the precautionary measures to stay away from the infection and stay healthy stay safe stay divine namaste